which is better, the new BMW M5 or the Audi RS6 Performance? The M5 starts at $121,000, the RS6 starts at $126,000, but which car is actually better? Well, in this episode, we are going to find out. The M5 gets huge design upgrades over the standard 5 series. On the front, it gets massive air intakes and air vents at both sides of the bumper. It has really sharp looking headlights and an illuminated grille. Thankfully, it's the traditional BMW kidney grille. I really like the design of the hood. Very similar to the one on the M3 and the M4. Down the side, it's really aggressive. It gets 20 inch wheels in the front and at the back, it gets 21 inch wheels. And they look fantastic. The new M5 has a wider body than the standard 5 series and the previous M5. It gets wider wheel arches and sportier looking side skirts. There's also the optional M carbon pack, which provides carbon fiber door mirrors and a carbon fiber roof to help reduce the weight. More on the weight in a bit. As standard, it gets black door mirrors and the panoramic glass roof. Now, I'm not a big fan of where the charge port is located, but at least there are no fake vents, like on the previous M5. I like the M5 badge behind the quarter window and the flush door handles. On the back, it's really aggressive. With the M carbon pack, you also get a carbon fiber rear spoiler. However, unlike with the M3 and the M4, the M Carbon Pack does not provide a carbon fiber rear diffuser, but the rear bumper looks way more aggressive. It gets quad exhaust pipes and a split diffuser. I also like the taillights. However, this vehicle is really heavy, mainly due to the hybrid system with the extra electric motor and batteries, and compared to its predecessor, the new M5 is bigger with a longer wheelbase. As a result, it weighs over 5,300 pounds. That is insanely heavy. The previous M5 competition weighed over 4,200 pounds, and the M5 CS weighed just over 4,000 pounds. Not very good for the new M5, but overall, I love the exterior design. It's such a beautiful car. In my opinion, this is the best looking BMW. It looks so much better compared to the previous M5 and the standard 5 series. The RS6 performance also gets lots of exterior design upgrades. On the front, it gets upgraded headlights, bigger air intakes, and more creases on the hood. This vehicle also is an estate or station wagon. So it gets a longer body with a hatchback style trunk, but sits low to the ground. And down the side, it's very nice. It gets matte gray trim, replacing the chrome trim. It gets lighter 22 inch wheels. The R6 also gets wider wheel arches and sportier looking side skirts. The back also gets noticeable design upgrades. It gets an aggressive looking rear spoiler and a more aggressive looking diffuser. This vehicle also is pretty heavy, but lighter than the M5. It weighs at about 5,000 pounds. The overall exterior design does look pretty aggressive, but I am leaning towards the more aggressive look of the M5. Now let's get into the good stuff. So, the new M5 is hybrid, but does that mean that BMW made the engine smaller, like Mercedes did with the AMG C63? Yes. Nope. Like the previous version, the new M5 has a 4.4 liter twin turbo V8 engine, but it only makes 585 horsepower and 553 pound-feet of torque that's slightly less powerful than the previous M5's V8. And unfortunately, there will be no competition version of the new M5 with a slightly more powerful engine, like with the previous vehicle. It still features an 8-speed automatic transmission. However, inside the gearbox is an electric motor that makes 194 horsepower and 207 pound-feet of torque. So the total power output for the new M5 is 727 horsepower and 738 pound-feet of torque. That's a significant increase in power over the previous M5. The previous M5 competition only had 617 horsepower and 553 pound-feet of torque. The M5 CS had 627 horsepower, 10 horsepower more than the competition. Yes, this new M5 is very powerful. It also features an 18.6 kilowatt hour battery that has a range of up to 43 miles. And the new M5 can run in electric only mode at up to 87 miles per hour. This hybrid system wasn't designed just to increase power, it was also designed in a way where this vehicle can be driven in electric only mode for long periods of time. It's a similar hybrid system to the BMW XM, so if you have to go somewhere in the morning, you can drive in electric only mode so you don't disturb the neighbors with the loud engine, and then during spirited drives, you can start the engine. This hybrid system will also help to reduce the emissions, which will improve the fuel economy. That way you will have to fill this car up with gas less often, and this new M5 is all-wheel drive. However, you can send the power all the way to the back if you want to do donuts. The RS6 has a much simpler powertrain. It has a 4-liter twin-turbo V8 engine, making 621 horsepower and 627 pound-feet of torque. 
just like with the M5, it powers all four wheels by an 8-speed torque converter automatic gearbox. The RS6 performance only runs on gas. It's not a hybrid vehicle, which does increase reliability and reduces the weight. So, the new M5 is a lot more powerful than the previous M5, but is it any faster? No, it's slightly slower than the previous M5, mainly due to the weight. This new M5 can accelerate from 0 to 60 miles power in 3.4 seconds. The previous M5 competition would go in 3.3 seconds, and the M5 CS, which was lighter and more powerful than the competition, would go in 3 seconds. It's a downgrade, however 3.5 seconds from 0 to 60 is still rapid. But BMW vehicles actually accelerate faster than claimed, so it's very likely that the new M5 will go from 0 to 60 miles power in less than 3.5 seconds. It was the same story with the previous M5 and most other BMW vehicles. The top speed is also limited to 155 miles per hour. However, if you get the optional M drivers pack, the full 190 mile per hour top speed gets unlocked. And the previous M5 models also had a top speed of 190 miles per hour. The RS6 performance also is very fast. It can go from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 3.3 seconds. Very fast. And just like the M5, it has a top speed of 190 miles per hour. The M5's interior is really nice. This is a big upgrade over the previous M5's interior. As soon as you sit inside the cabin, you can instantly tell that this is a $121,000 car. It has glorious ambient lighting, which looks awesome at night. And BMW's interiors are very high quality. They have some of the most expensive feeling materials. And all of the pieces and trims are very solidly put together. The widescreen display on the dashboard adds to the modern feeling of the interior. Now, the M5 gets a bunch of upgrades in the interior as well. It gets sports seats. They have bigger bolsters and provide more shoulder support to hold the occupants better in place. Second big change is the M Sport steering wheel. It's flat bottomed, has the red pinstripe, it has updated paddle shifters and the M buttons where you can store different driving settings for a more personalized experience. It also gets carbon fiber trim and a red start stop button like the previous M5. And there's lots of M badging throughout the cabin. The center console has the M badge. Underneath the glass scroll wheel, there's M badging on the sport seats. There's the M badge on the steering wheel. There's the M badge on the door sills and in the welcome lights. It also has M colored stitching on the seat belts, just like every other M vehicle. And it has aluminum pedals. But now the M5 gets the new UI specifically for the M line, like all of the other latest BMW M cars. And BMW's infotainment system is pretty good. This display has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Both are wireless, just like in the previous M5. And then there are a bunch of other minor upgrades. Now, the bigger body and the longer wheelbase is another reason why this vehicle is so heavy. But a benefit of that is the legroom in the back has been increased compared to the previous M5. So passengers will find it more comfortable in the back of the new M5. And overall, it's a very nice cabin. It's a lovely place to be in. It's very spacious, very luxurious, and BMW interiors are very high quality. The RS6's interior design is starting to get a bit old. It's still a very nice place to be in. Audi interiors are also very high quality. They have expensive feeling materials, and all of the pieces and trims feel solid. This interior is just due for a redesign. It does have beautiful ambient lighting. Not as beautiful as in the M5, but still very nice. And I do like these big screens in the middle. Just like the M5, the RS6 has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Both are wireless. Now like on the exterior, the RS6 performance gets interior upgrades as well. It gets sports seats. They have bigger bolsters and provide more shoulder support to hold the occupants better in place. It gets carbon fiber trim. You can also go for the optional Alcantara steering wheel. And you can get the stitching in blue, black, red, or gray. Overall, it's still a very nice interior. And it's very spacious. But the M5's interior is cooler. BMW M5's trunk is up to 17 cubic feet of space, which is fairly large. The RS6's hatchback style trunk not only is bigger, with a capacity of 60 cubic feet, it also makes it easier to load in items. And this is a station wagon, or a state. It has a towing capacity of over 4,600 pounds. Now, is the weight going to affect the way the new M5 drives? Usually, extra weight has a negative impact on the driving experience of a vehicle. But BMW's M team claims that the weight will not impact the way the new M5 drives. And that's because they have tuned the chassis a lot to make sure that this new vehicle drives like an M5 should. So it gets lowered stiffer spring suspension, which improves the agility and makes the vehicle more nimble. But it also has adaptive dampers, 
so you can set them to a softer setting for improved comfort, or you can set them to a stiffer setting for improved agility and a sportier drive. The M5 also gets stronger engine mounts for improved stability and handling, and it gets stiffer strut bars at the front and the rear. That provides an overall stiffer body and increases steering feedback for a sharper steering response. It also helps to improve the stability and the handling by reducing understeer and body roll. The connection between the front subframe and the steering rack has been stiffened for improved steering response as well. And there is variable ratio steering, like the previous M5. So at low speeds, the vehicle turns faster, but as the vehicle travels at higher speeds, the steering gets less sensitive. It basically makes the steering more controllable and also helps to increase road feel. The M5 also now gets rear wheel steering as standard. So at low speeds, they turn out the opposite direction of the front wheels to reduce the turning circle, making this vehicle way more maneuverable and at higher speeds, the back wheels turn at the same direction as the front wheels for increased stability as well. With the standard brake equipment, the M5 gets six piston calipers gripping 410mm discs at the front, and at the back, it gets single piston calipers gripping 398mm discs. But since this vehicle is so heavy, it's recommended to get the optional carbon ceramic brakes, and that provides 420mm discs at the front. The M5 also gets the active M differential, which can set a full 100% power to the outer wheel with the most grip. That helps a lot with corner exiting traction. The new M5 will also have an updated all-wheel drive system for better response and agility as well. And it has active anti-roll bars to help reduce the body roll, which will increase the stability. And overall, this vehicle has lots of power. And obviously, with the hybrid system, you can drive in electric-only mode so you don't disturb the neighbors. And then during spirited driving, you can start the engine. The RS6 has a very powerful engine. And its chassis has been tuned a lot, just like with the M5. For a better driving experience. So it gets improved gearbox software, which reduces throttle lag by providing faster shifts. The RS6 gets sport tuned adaptive air suspension for improved agility, and it features dynamic ride control, which uses the dampers to improve stability by reducing body roll. Speaking of body roll, the sway bars also help to prevent body roll. That way the stability is improved even more. This vehicle has variable ratio steering. Just like with the M5, the steering ratio constantly adjusts based on the vehicle's speed and the steering angle for better steering response. Rear wheel steering also comes as standard with the RS6, so at low speeds, the rear wheels turn at the opposite direction of the front wheels, which reduces the turning circle, making this vehicle way more maneuverable, and at higher speeds, the rear wheels turn at the same direction as the front wheels for improved stability, and of course, the RS6 performance has a limited slip differential at the back, so it can send power to the auto wheel with the most grip. Helps a lot with corner exiting traction. Speaking of traction, the all-wheel drive system significantly improves traction. This vehicle also comes with huge brakes. So as standard, the RS6 gets huge 10-piston calipers in the front, gripping 420mm discs. And at the back, it features single-piston calipers, gripping 370mm discs. There are huge brakes, but you can also upgrade to carbon ceramic brakes, like with the M5. And that provides massive 440mm discs at the front. The carbon ceramic brake kit also reduces this vehicle's unsprung weight by 75 pounds. It also unlocks the 190 mile per hour top speed. Without the carbon ceramic brakes, the top speed is limited to 155 miles per hour. Overall, this vehicle also is very advanced. So which is better, the Audi RS6 Performance or the BMW M5? It's the Audi RS6 Performance. Plug-in hybrid vehicles are not the best, because they have an engine and an electric motor with batteries, and that makes the vehicle more complex, which reduces reliability, increases weight, and increases cost. The RS6 has the same level of performance as the M5, yet it's more practical and lighter. But do you guys agree? Let me know in the comments down below, which vehicle do you guys prefer? But anyways, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode.